Hello once again friends. Today I'll be discussing FPGAs as another option to keep in our arsenal of devices to tinker with and develop projects. And I'll be giving a brief overview and demonstration of the use of the RDS7 FPGA board with an example. An FPGA is a field programmable gate array. It's a programmable logic device that we can use to create customized um, digital hardware on a chip. This allows us to run a relatively massive amount of concurrent operations on a device in contrast to the more or less serialized operation of uh, programs we would run on a microcontroller like the ESP32 or Raspberry Pi Pico we've looked at before on this channel. We can even implement our own microprocessor on the FPGA along with custom logic and interfaces. Practically speaking, it's the closest uh, most of us will get to creating a custom ASIC or application-specific integrated circuit and achieving ASIC-like performance. I have here a Digilent RDS7 board built with a Xilinx Spartan 7 series FPGA. It's an RDS750 uh, to be precise. The FPGA itself has a total of 65,200 flip-flops, 120 DSP slices, 2700 kilobits of block RAM, on-chip analog to digital converter, and claims to run at internal clock speeds up to 450 megahertz. Next to the FPGA, we have 256 megabytes of DDR3 memory, which is a ton of dynamic RAM compared to what we might be accustomed to. The Xilinx tools include a memory interface generator wizard that generates a memory controller interface for user logic, making it much easier to use. The board has Arduino and ChipKit compatible shield connectors, which allows us to leverage many existing shields for our projects. We just need to keep in mind it's not compatible with shields that output 5 volt digital or analog signals. We have a 3.3 volt limit. It also has four PMOD connectors for connecting to compatible devices. PMOD is a Digilent proprietary connectivity which, uh, with, with many PMOD devices available. You can find PMOD boards with time of flight sensors, wireless communication modules, canvas controllers, relay switches, all sorts of sensors really, etc. Uh, there's a USB connector for powering up the board and for actually programming or configuring it. There are four slide switches mounted on the board for input alongside a series of four uh, push button switches. We have four normal LEDs on board for output along with two RGB LEDs. We've also got spy flash memory for storing the FPGA configuration and uh, usable for user code as, as well. We also have some additional power options on board with a power jack and power supply chip for uh, regulation. I think that's enough of an overview of this board. I'd like to show you what's involved in creating our own digital logic and implementing it on the FPGA. I've already installed the free edition of the Xilinx the Vivado tool for FPGA development. We will select create a project to start with. Select a project name and location next. And we will be creating an RTL project. That is, we will be writing our own code using a hardware description language for implementing uh, on the FPGA. In our case, we'll be using the Verilog language to create our digital logic. Fortunately, Vivado has a database of popular FPGA boards that we can select to make things easier, including the RDS7. Otherwise, we need to select the precise FPGA configuration like I was starting to do here until I realized And once we've selected the correct board and revision, we can get started with our project. I do want to say here that although I'm demonstrating a Xilinx based FPJ and Xilinx tools, for whatever FPJ vendor and device you choose for your project, you'll go through a very similar set of steps. Now, once we have our project manager screen up, we want to create a design source. In this case, a Verilog file called tinker.v. It gives us an option to create a module name, which we will also name Tinker. 
This will end up being our top level design file. We'll double click on the newly created design source file and eventually up will pop a Verilog text editor. Now I've written the Verilog code example here, which I'll go through quickly to explain what it does. As usual, I'll provide the code listings for everything in a link I provide in the video description. At a high level, the digital design here will increment a 4-bit counter if switch 0 on the board is off, and will decrement the counter if the switch uh, is on. The speed with which the counter is incremented or decremented is controlled by switch 1 on the board. If it's off, the counter will increment or decrement every 25 million clock cycles of the system clock, and if switch 1 is on, the counter will increment or decrement every 100 million system clock cycles. We'll be using a 100 megahertz system clock, so the update rate will be reasonable. The 4-bit counter value will be displayed using the four LEDs on the board we mentioned before. The module declaration here starts off with a list of the input and output ports to the module. We've got as input a clock, reset, and the two switch values. As output, we've got the four LEDs that represent the 4-bit counter value. I've parameterized the system clock counter thresholds for the fast count and slow count, so I can easily experiment with them. Here in this walkthrough, I've set them to 25 and 100 instead of 25 million and 100 million, so I can simulate the design in reasonable time. I don't want to wait hundreds of millions of simulation cycles to test this. That would take much longer than I have. Once I'm done simulation, I will fix those parameters to what they should be before the FPGA gets programmed. I declare a number of signals that will be used in the code. This consists of various counters, uh, flopped signals, and shift registers. In order to prevent switch bounce for switch 0 and 1, I've implemented debouncing logic that takes as input the switch state and pushes it into uh, an 8-bit shift register for each of those switches. The switch value is only considered valid if all 8 bits of that register are the same. That is, the state of the switch has to be stable for 8 system clock cycles before a change is recognized by this design. Next, we create the logic for the system clock counter. This is a 28-bit counter that will increment in value every system clock cycle and will clear to 0 depending on the switch selectable counter thresholds. If switch 1 is low, it will clear earlier than if switch 1 is high. There is another signal called count pulse, which pulses uh, one for one system clock cycle when the threshold is reached. This signal is used to increment or decrement, uh, decrement the 4-bit four, uh, the four main counter. And of course, whether the 4-bit counter increments or decrements depends on the value of switch 0. Finally, the LED outputs are assigned to the 4-bit counter value. LED 0 is assigned counter bit 0. LED 1 is assigned counter bit 1, and so on. Next, we move on to the test bench we will use to test the design. I created a simulation source in the project manager window and then wrote the test bench code. Very briefly, the test bench provides input stimulus to the Tinker module including an oscillating system clock, uh, an initial reset, and changing of the switch values. I won't get into too much detail, but I show here the output waveforms from the simulation, and this is how we can check uh, that the design is operating as expected. In a design with greater complexity, uh, we would do much more extensive testing, checking against some golden reference values or model, and normally just use the waveforms for debug. I'm going to quickly move on to actually implementing the, the uh, design on the FPGA. We need to create a set of constraints for the design. This is in the form of an XDC file, which I think stands for Xilinx Design Constraints. 
I took as a template a standard constraints file for the RDS7 board provided by Digilent, Digilent Online. What we need to do in this file is uncomment and modify the lines that correspond to the physical inputs and outputs to the FPGA we're using and map them to the signal names we use in our design. Here, I've modified the lines for creating the 100 megahertz system clock and map the clock to the iClock port name we used in our top level module. The clock frequency is defined by the period, 10 nanoseconds in this case. Similarly, we uncomment the lines for switch zero and switch one and map them to the port names we defined for them. Next, we uncomment the lines for LEDs 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the board and map them to LED 0, 1, 2, 3 in our design. Finally, I'm using one of the momentary push buttons on the board for the reset input. Okay, with that done, I'm going to select Run Synthesis from the toolbar so we can start the implementation process. Synthesis involves analyzing and mapping the Verilog code into actual logic gates. I'm just going to fast forward through all these steps as each completes. After synthesis, we run implementation. The tool needs to map or allocate the logic into the FPGA resources and then perform uh, routing. Next, we generate the bitstream. This is the file that is uploaded to the spy memory and used to actually configure the FPGA itself. The last step here is to open the hardware manager, establish connection to the FPGA board, which is connected via USB to the computer already, and then program the FPGA device with our bitstream file. And of course, now we need to have a look at how our FPGA board actually operates with its new configuration. We see the FPGA running with the four LEDs representing the four bit counter value incrementing. We push the reset button and can see the LEDs clearing, meaning the counter has been set to zero. Moving one of the slide switches changes the counter update rate as expected. Moving the other switch causes the counter to decrement, as we can see from the LED output. And then we slow down the update rate and make the counter increment again. Success. I hope this video has been informative and inspires you to at least consider exploring FPGAs to bring your projects to the next level. And more importantly, learn more about the technology itself. Until next time, keep tinkering.